So there's quite a deal of ready up going on here. The Minister for Health last year was asked to provide evidence for centralising common cancers. She wasn't able to do it. She didn't produce the evidence because she doesn't have it. But if there is no good evidence for centralising common cancers or no good evidence for mass hospital closures, then why are we doing it? Why are they so central to the government's programme of what they call health reform? Well, in a word, there is a reason. There are two reasons, as I see it. First of all, public service closures are essential to privatisation. And this really is the name of the game. <coughs> Nurturing for profit companies in health requires public sector pruning. Our public health services are being cut to make way for private healthcare companies. Profit or not for profit. And the difference between them sometimes is just technical. Cutting back, for example, on the HSE's home health service here in Cork City. What does that do? Apart from leaving older people and sick people more miserable than they were before, it helps to create a larger market for commercial firms. And you've got companies like UPMC, which is supposed to be running the co-located hospital if it ever gets off the ground here in Cork. And UPMC has plans to expand into what we call primary care. And that would include home health. So it all fits in. It fits in like the pieces of a jigsaw. Scaling back services in St. Mary's Hospital, the orthopaedic hospital in Grona Brawl, what's that going to do? Again, apart from the cost to patients, there is a commercial gain out there. And surely, closing that hospital will help boost the coffers of the city's private hospitals. Public sector involvement in healthcare, private sector, I should say, has scaled up significantly in recent years. Thanks to the government's political philosophy, otherwise known as neoliberalism, or Thatcherism, if you prefer, which is something we're more familiar with, we now face a future where medical services funded by taxpayers will be increasingly provided by for-profit operators. New roles have been given to the private sector that we couldn't have dreamt of 30 years ago. 20 years ago, despite the evidence that exists internationally that there are risks in this approach to patients. Patient safety is at risk, and so is the public purse. The private sector is now being asked to provide beds for public patients, and this is going back to co-location, carrying out medical procedures under contract to the government, under the National Treatment Purchase Fund, biggest waste of public money ever, and implementing that golden, golden formula, which might have worked very well in the building industry and construction, but doesn't work so well when you apply it to healthcare. Design, build, maintain, and operate health facilities. And in this case, I'm talking about radiotherapy centres for cancer patients. Six of them. I've been told that we'll, we'll never again have a publicly funded radiotherapy service. Not as far as the government is concerned, anyway. Our public health system, such as it is, with its limits, is being dismantled bit by bit to make room for profiteers. And this is being driven not only by Thatcherism, not only by a political philosophy, but also by greed. And I think we need to get clear on this. There is huge, huge money to be made out of healthcare. People can be counted upon to fall in, especially in a recession. Unemployment, like poverty, is bad for health. There are lucrative contracts to be handed out, and contracts, as we know, may be given to friends, to friends of friends, they may be given to relations, or even relations of relations. And so it goes on and on and on and on. People talk about corruption in banking. They have no idea of the corruption in healthcare. That's the way things work in Ireland. And to me, that's part of the reason why things have gone off the rails as badly as they have.
Take GP services, for example. Our general practitioner services are now going to be corporatized. What does that mean? Well, what that means is that public-private partnerships are being used to build the new primary care centres. We went to the market and we let the market decide. A HSE bureaucrat proudly told a healthcare conference that I was at in the Plaza Hotel in Santry last year. But the shift from hospital to so-called primary care community services is actually a shift, first of all, from general practitioners, and this is where the corporate bit comes in, <coughs> from GPs providing services in surgeries that they owned themselves or that they owned in a group practice to something else entirely. Primary care centres, large, multi-million polyclinics owned by private companies for profit or not for profit. And as I say, there isn't a whole heap of difference between them. But these investor-owned companies mark a sea change, a really, really, really deep change, where the owners are no longer the managers, like they were in the old days with the GPs, and where patient care may actually have to take second place, and probably will, to turning a profit. It's all been done in England already. You just have to look at what's happening over there with these polyclinics. Little old ladies are being asked to travel halfway across London because they can't get a GP, and people are being charged for services that used to be free. So not alone are we in the biggest recession of all time since the 1930s, but we're now finding that entitlements that until now we took for granted are actually being taken away from us. And all of this has been done behind closed doors. Because behind all of this, there is a deeper shift. There's a shift from public to private, from free to paying. Public hospital services provided on an outpatient basis to everybody, free of charge. Like physiotherapy, for example, will now be charged for in these new primary care centres. And the rules governing healthcare eligibility are being rewritten, even as we speak. A bill is being introduced shortly, which is actually, many of us believe, uh, going to cut back on people's entitlements, We're going to make the rules narrower and cut more and more people out of services that used to be free. Now, this is bad for society, bad for people, bad for the economy even. Private health care results in care of worse quality at higher cost. And all of the evidence internationally, if you look at it, and I have looked at it, a lot of it in any event, uh, will show you this. There's no shortage of evidence in this area. Private care, for example, costs taxpayers more. Research on for-profit health care is extremely negative. Coming from the US, coming from Australia, coming from Canada, the picture is quite poor. Health services run for profit are just simply less safe. They cost more to provide. Death rates are higher in for-profit institutions. They are higher in for-profit nursing homes. The profit motive, and you might have even seen it on television, on BBC television, they did a holiday programme where they showed um, people on holidays going into the local private hospital for something small, and then, you know, getting tests that they didn't need, they didn't want, outlandish x-rays, you know, when they'd gone in with, you know, a sprained ankle or whatever. Um, but that's what happens with the profit motive. It does lead to over-testing, and it does lead to over-treatment. And over-testing and over-treatment increases the risks for patients. Here, for example, the private nursing home sector has been found to be quite deficient in many areas. And we've seen that. But we don't know anything about the private hospitals. Because, of course, we don't have any inspectors. We don't have any regulation. And, and this is one area where I'm sure Ray might make an exception where he says we don't need more laws, we don't need more regulations. Well, actually, when it comes to private health care, yes, we do. 